In this video, we're going to revisit solving radical equations. And if you recall, a radical equation is one where the variable is located under this under a square root symbol. Um, let's take a look at problem number one. In this particular case, uh, what we would have done, what we did when we solved these problems in the past, is if we had an x under the square root like this one, what we'd need to do is do the weakest link in terms of order of operations. The 5 and the minus 1 are trapped under the square root, so they stick around the longest with the x. This plus 2 here can be subtracted from each side, and we start by subtracting 2 from each uh, side of the equation. At this point, I'm going to uh, find out I have the square root of x minus 1 left on the left, and on the other side, 14 minus 2 gives me 12. At this point, because the x is inside the square root, uh, along with the 5 and the 1, I need to get rid of the radical next. Uh, to get rid of a square root, we're going to square both sides. On the left-hand side, the only purpose of the squaring is to undo the square root, and what's left behind is just what was inside, 5x minus 1. On the other side, I'm going to do 12 squared, which is 144. Now I have a new equation, no square roots. The x is almost by itself. I just need to finish following a uh, Undoing, following those reverse order of operations to undo. Um, if there's a minus 1, so we're going to add 1 to each side first. That gives me 5x equals 145. Then I'm going to divide by 5 on each side to finish getting the x alone. And I end up with x equals, what will that be, 29. Now, remember, when we're solving radical uh, equations, this process of squaring both sides introduces the possibility of having an extra answer that doesn't actually work. So always check your final solution to see if it works. And again, that's because squaring both sides produces what we call uh, extraneous roots. Can produce extraneous roots. So what do you do? You just have to make sure you put that 29 back in the original equation and see. So in this case, you're going to go 5 times 29 minus 1. Then you want to add and take the square root of that and then add 2. And hopefully that comes out to be 14. So let's take a peek. Uh, 5 times 29 ends up giving me 145. Minus 1 is 144. The square root of 144 is 12. Plus 2 gives me 14, and that works out great. So in this case, x equals 29 is a solution, um, is a possible solution, and in fact actually is a solution because it does work. All right. So with that in mind, then, let's take a look at a problem like number 2. In this case, uh, why, why are we redoing this if we've kind of learned how to solve these equations before? Well, now that we've learned about quadratic equations, it will allow us to solve uh, some of these types of problems that we would not have been able to do before. Let's take problem number two, for example. In this case, I want to get the x by itself, this, but there's two of them in the equation. One of them's hidden under the square root, and the other one is over here on the right-hand side. I don't even have a chance of putting anything together as long as this x is hidden inside the square root. So in this problem, the first thing I'd like to do is to um, get rid of the square root here and then deal with the equation that's left behind. So let's see what happens when we do that. Right now, because of this 2 outside the square root, I'm going to have to go ahead and divide by that 2 first. Uh, when I square both sides, I want to make sure that only the square root is on the left so it completely undoes it. Uh, having a 2 out in front of it complicates things, and most people don't account for it correctly. So the best thing to do is just go ahead and divide both sides by 2. Here, that cancels out and leaves me just with the five, uh, the root 5 minus 3x. And on the right-hand side, I have 10x over 2, which can simplify to just be 5x. Now, at this point, I can get rid of the square root by squaring both sides. Here on the left, the square and the square root undo each other, and all it leaves me with behind is the 5 minus 3x. Over on the right-hand side, I square both sides, and this time I end up with 25x squared. Don't forget that we're squaring everything on the right, so we need to make sure to square both of those pieces. Uh, 5x times 5x gives me 25x squared. Now, I want to solve my equation for x. I still have more than one x, and now I ha in fact have one that's an x squared term and one that's an x term. And so we can't, those aren't like terms and we can't put them together. However, as you may recall from our last chapter or um, lesson, we talked about how if we have x squareds and x's that we can solve using either factoring or the quadratic formula after we get one side of the equation equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. 
Um, I'm going to move everything over to the right so that my squared term is positive. In this case, I'm going to add 3x to each side, and I'm also going to minus 5 from each side. On the left, that all crosses out and leaves me with 0. And on the right, I end up with 25x squared plus 3x minus 5 as an equation. At this point in time, you, uh, there's no greatest common factor to pull out. Um, you can try to factor this if you like. Usually my general rule of thumb is I give it about, you know, 30 seconds to try to factor it. And if I can't find something that works, then I just dive into using the quadratic formula. To use the quadratic formula, remember the first thing you want to do is once one side is equal to zero, you want to identify a, b, and c for this particular problem. In this case, my a is the coefficient of the x squared, which is 25. b is always the coefficient of the x, which is 3. And c is the plane number, which in this case is negative 5. Then we want to go in and actually use the quadratic formula to evaluate it. So our quadratic formula, again, it, and it's a good idea to just go ahead and write this on the top of your paper or something, is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2a. So plugging these values here in that I have, I'm going to have negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 3 squared minus 4 times 25 times negative 5. And this is all going to be divided by 2 times 25. To simplify, and, and now all I need to do is evaluate this expression. Again, work it into three little pieces. First, do the, uh, the negative b part, which in this case is negative 3. Then I want to simplify everything that's under the square root. The 3 squared gives me 9. And then minus 4 times 25 times negative 5. Uh, this is going to give me, let's see, 4 times 25 is 100, times 5 is 500. Um, so 9, and that's going to end up being a plus 500 is 509. And then I want to divide that by 2 times 25, which in this case is 50. So here I end up with a, kind of an interesting solution. Um, and I'd like to be able to go through and see if 509, uh, you can try to simplify this as a square root. This is kind of those, those uh, possible solutions that we could get from this particular example. All right, so with this in mind then, uh, the next thing that if I want, sometimes I, what I need to do is I need to check to see if both of these answers work. Plugging these values, so plugging in negative 3 plus radical 509 over 50 is a little bit cumbersome. Uh, and so I really recommend just going ahead and switching over and getting two decimal values for these. Remember to do that, the first thing you want to do is uh, we're going to have negative 3 plus the square root of 509, and we're going to divide that by 50. And then for the other one, we're going to have negative 3 minus the square root of 509, and we're going to divide that by 50. So let's pull up our calculator and uh, figure out what decimal values would be that can work with that. So for the first one, we're going to have negative 3 plus the square root of 509. Uh, hit the equal sign and then divide by the 50 that's on the denominator. And I'm going to get 0.391 for one of those. For the other value over here, I'm going to try that. Uh, negative 3 minus the square root of 509. Make sure you hit equals and then divide that by 50. So in this case, I'm going to get negative 0.511. So what I want to do is I want to plug these values up here in for uh, x in both of these equations and see if they come out to be equal. So for the first one, if I put 0.391 in, going back to the original problem, it was 2 times the square root of uh, 5 minus 3 times 0.391. Close the print and then, well, and depending on your calculator, you might want to put parentheses around those. Um, when, if you can see it inside the square root, then you don't really need to. Um, but if the square root extends all the way over, so your shirt's inside, otherwise you do want to try to add uh, parentheses in there. So 2, two root 5 minus 3 times 0 0.391, go ahead and hit enter. It's 3.91. If I do 10 times 0.391, 
Notice I also get 3.91. These are not perfectly aligned because we had to round our decimals anyway, but as long as they're really close, we'll go ahead and say that is actually a valid solution. And so I'll go ahead and count that. Now let's go ahead and try checking our uh, negative 5.11 answer and see if that ends up being okay. So here I'm gonna go two times the square root of five minus three times negative 0.511 then make sure you get out of the square root. And then um, let's see what that comes out to be. It gives us 5.11 and then we want to try to do 10 times negative 0.511. And that gives me negative 5.11. Super close, but one's positive and one's negative. So what does that mean for us? That means that this is not a valid solution. If we put negative, um, we it, it doesn't end up making both sides of the equation equal. So in this case, um, our solution process of squaring both sides did end up introducing a possible, or introducing an impossible answer, as well as one that did actually work. Now the thing is that with solving the, uh, these equations, uh, sometimes one answer will work, sometimes, like in this case, sometimes both answers will work, and in some cases, neither answer will work. So it's very important that you always try all of your solutions back in the original problem to see if they work. All right, so basically what's happening again is we're trying to get rid of the square root, and in the process of trying to do that, we end up with some sort of a quadratic equation that, need, that we, we will need to solve. Um, so you just wanna be aware of that as you're trying to solve different types of equations. Uh, in this example here with problem three, notice that we have two x's again, but one of them's in the square root, so we need to get it out of the square root. Uh, before we can actually deal with anything else. So in this case, this x, the square root's already by itself over here on the left-hand side. So I, or on the right-hand side rather. So all I need to do here is square to undo the square root and that's gonna bring the x out of the radical, which is great. On the left-hand side, however, we have three x plus five squared. And don't forget that what that means is three x plus five times three x plus five, which means we have to foil here. Uh, a lot of times people will just square each piece and that's not good enough. When you have that plus, you've gotta make sure to think of this as a, a full blown out multiplication and you've gotta distribute both parts of it. So here, when we do foil, uh, 3x times 3x gives me 9x squared. On the outside, 3x times five gives me plus 15x. On the inside, 3x plus five gives me plus 15x. And in the last position, five times five will give me plus 25. And that's equal to x. As I go to put things together, uh, notice that we can combine like terms here. We get 9x squared plus, that'll be 30x, plus 25 equals x. I still wanna get the x by itself. I've got squared terms and I've got x terms, so I do wanna use either factoring or the quadratic formula to solve. In either case, I need to have one side of the equation equal to zero before I start. So I'm gonna to need to minus x from both sides of the equation right here. And then this problem, that's gonna give me a 9x squared plus 29x plus 25 equals zero. Uh, again, you can play around with factoring a little bit and see if you can come up with a solution that would work in this particular case, or you can go in and just start on the quadratic formula. If you do that, your a is going to be nine, because it's the number here in front of the x squared. Your b is going to be 29, and your c is gonna be 25. Uh, again, we're gonna, what we're gonna do as we go through, let's go and see what that process is gonna look like. X equals negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all divided by two A. Plugging our values in, B is 29, so we have negative 29 plus or minus the square root of B squared, so 29 squared minus four times A is nine times C is 25. And we wanna divide all of that by two times a or two times nine. Simplifying things here, negative 29 is from our first part. When I simplify the square root symbol, let's go ahead and bring that up and calculator up and slide it over here. Oh, maybe. Let's see if we can do that a little more carefully here. There we go. Okay, so we wanna do 29 squared minus four times nine times 25. And in this case, I'm gonna end up with a negative 59 inside the square root. And for here, I'm gonna divide by 18. 
Now, in this case, do notice what we do have here in this particular problem is a negative inside the square root. We can write imaginary solutions that will work for that. Um, however, it's really kind of beyond our kin to, to try to figure out if those values are actually equal or not. We really don't have the skills and it's above outside of the scope of this class. So in these problems, if you get to the point where you have a negative inside the square root, just go ahead and say that there are no real solutions because we don't really have a good way to check it. And then you can kind of stop there. Um, regardless of what happens, there is no real number that we can put in for x that will actually make that equation come out to be true. All right. Over here on the far end, uh, we have one more example of a problem. Again, an x is trapped inside the radical. I need to get it out of the radical before I can think of doing any other combination things. There's a plus 4 here, so I'm going to have to take a second and subtract 4 from each side. That's going to go away and leave me with the square root of 2x minus 3. On the other side, I'm going to have 5x plus 3. Now, I still need to get that x out of the square root. Now that the square root is alone, I can square this side. Uh, to get rid of the square root, and then I'll have to square the other side to keep my equation balanced. On the left, the square and the square root undo each other and leave me with 2x minus 3. And on the right, I have to foil out 5x plus 3 times 5x plus 3. When I do that, 5x times 5x is 25x squared. On the outside, I end up with a plus 15x. On the inside, a plus 15x. And at the end, 3 times 3 gives me 9. I can combine those like terms here. Uh, 25x squared plus 30x plus 9. And notice on the other side I had a 2x minus 3 that has to keep coming down. Now again I want to solve for x. Lots of x terms here. One of them is squared, one of them is not. I, so I'm never going to be able to get to like term status. But I can get this into a quadratic equation in general form by getting one side equal to 0 and then I'll be able to either factor or use the quadratic formula. In this case, I'm going to minus 2x from each side. I'm also going to add 3 from each side. Again, my goal, I need one side equal to 0 before I can use the formula. On the right, I have 25x squared plus 28x plus 12. And so now this is the equation that I need to solve. Uh, we can still use any of our other tools that we learned before. Check for greatest common factor. You could try to factor this. Uh, if things don't work out very well, then let's just dive into the quadratic formula. If a, a will, in this case, a will be 25 because it's in front of the x squared. b will be 28 because it's in front of the x, and then c will be 12. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here's my quadratic formula. I won't bother writing it out again, but let's go ahead and plug each of my values in and see what I need to do to solve. So we start out, and it's going to be x is equal to negative b, so negative 28 plus or minus the square root of b squared, so 28 squared, minus 4 times a is 25, times c is 12, all divided by 2 times a. Okay, now we just need to evaluate each of our three little sections, and then we can look at what our solutions might be. Uh, the negative b gives us negative 28. Inside the square root here, let's pull up our calculator again, move it back over to the left so we can see. And here we're going to have 28 squared minus 4 times 25. Oops, let's try. Missed my 4 there. 4 times 25 times 12. And I get a negative 416 over 50. Again, in this case, because I ended up with a negative inside the square root, I'm going to go ahead and just say that I'm done because I, and that I have, again, no real solutions. You don't want to, um, otherwise we need to go back and check all those values back in our original equation, and we don't have the tools to do that. So a negative inside means we'd get imaginary solutions only, so no real solutions for this particular example problem. We this. Contrary to popular opinion here from the videos, we do usually get uh, solutions to, the, or not usually, but we do often get solutions to these. Um, sometimes we'll get two solutions, but you need to plug those back in and check and see if one or both or none of the solutions work.